Are you also thinking about switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve? About damn time. Today I'll be going through my personal experience switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve to help you make that transition as well. And you don't have to be a pro in either of the programs to do this and you definitely don't have to take an $800 course. Unless, of course, you really want to. I've only been using it for like one or two videos so far but I'm already feeling comfortable with it. My goal with this video is to give a realistic depiction of how easy of a transition it can be to go from Premiere Pro or any other software into DaVinci Resolve. I'll be going through my first impressions and the challenges I met as I edited my first video in DaVinci Resolve. Now I've been working with filmmaking, animation and visual effects for multiple years now and since my self-taught journey started in Adobe Photoshop it felt natural to me to transition into Premiere Pro once I started working with film. I mean it felt like the only option at the time but as it's clear to me now things have changed. There is and have been for quite some time a lot of talk on the internet about switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve but changing the software you work in can be really uncomfortable. At least it was for me. I mean I even stuck with Premiere Pro for animations and visual effects for a really long time before I finally decided to learn After Effects. I mean I made lyric videos in Premiere Pro and once I moved to After Effects I didn't really want to go back to Premiere and that if anything just tells me that these two softwares are not doing it for me. Now, I've wanted to give DaVinci Resolve a try for I think almost a year now, but it's so easy to just keep pushing and pushing this transition into a new software. I finally decided to do it as a part of starting this YouTube journey. Once I realized how easy of a transition it was, I, I regret postponing it all this time. So I, I'm glad I finally did it and uh, if you're considering doing it, I think you should just do it. So before we hop into the program, I want to quickly summarize the main differences that made me decide to switch to DaVinci Resolve. The first thing to consider, especially if you're an upcoming filmmaker or a student, is the pricing of the two products. I've always kind of thought that Adobe's monthly subscription format is a bit steep, especially since you're probably going to be using more than one software. With a yearly subscription of Adobe Suite landing at $744 per year, compared to DaVinci Resolve Studio's one-time fee of $358 and I mean that's just the paid version it's absolutely mind-blowing to me that there's a free version as well that works well to begin with another thing I love about DaVinci Resolve is that they offer their full arsenal of tools within one software which is just a much more natural workflow in getting your video from idea to finished product all in one place now when it comes to performance I'm actually not one of the many people who've been experienced never-ending crashes using Premiere Pro. My main issue has been the inability to preview footage and animations without stuttering or having to pre-render for a really long time. And when it comes to performance in the form of preview and render, DaVinci Resolve is an absolute beast. This however is of course if you have the studio version. Coming into this transition, I was really hoping I could settle for the free version of DaVinci. The studio version has a few effects and things here and there, but that just wasn't enough for me to upgrade at first glance. It wasn't until I started actually working in the software that I noticed I had issues with preview stuttering and frame drops. After some research, I found that the free version of DaVinci Resolve relies completely on your CPU and that GPU acceleration actually is something that's only available for the studio version. And for me personally who has invested in a really good GPU for a lot of VRAM for renders and stuff that was kind of the breaking point that led to me having to upgrade. However if you're unable to afford the studio version there seems to be some workarounds to improve performance. I recommend doing some googling on the subject before getting fully discouraged. Another nice feature in DaVinci is their autosave and backup settings. But if I'm being completely honest I think I'll never stop spamming the save button every other second. That's just something that sits so deep in me I will never be able to change it. <laughs> Alright so when you jump in this is what you're gonna be seeing hopefully something like this and we're gonna navigate this user interface using these tabs down here 
And what these tabs are is basically different workspaces depending on what part of the editing process you're in. All right, so first up, we got the media tab, which is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can import your files and manage folders and media and stuff like that. So before we import any media into this project, we wanna go down here on the bottom right to check our project settings. And you can access them there all the time. Uh, but here you can edit your timeline resolution, for example, or if you wanna change the timeline frame rate for your project, that could be really good to do before you even do anything. Another thing that I was looking forward to jumping into DaVinci Resolve was the very hyped power bins. By using power bins, you can create generic folders for your digital assets, allowing you to access them from any project that you're working on instead of having to import them to every new project. And it's just really, really convenient. I wanted to start using it right away when I got into my first project, but for some reason it comes deactivated by default. So what you want to do is you want to go up to view and then select show power bins and then you're good. And then you can start using it in your projects. Let's move on to the next tab. We have the cut tab and I personally haven't really used the cuts tab very much. I decided to do all of my cutting inside the edit tab. But basically the cut tab is a simplified version of the edit tab, which allows you to quickly make a rough cut of your video. But since I didn't really use it myself, I'm gonna hop over to the edit tab. One thing that I quickly realized was that I was missing a quick way to split clips like in Premiere Pro I would use the razor for this so what I did to fix this was I went into keyboard customization here and I searched for split clip now there is a function for this and then I simply just bind that to C which is the button that you have the cut function in Premiere Pro so we got that and then I'll just a new name to my preset all right so now that I have a clip selected here in the timeline I can simply press C and that makes a cut into the clip, which is really convenient. Another thing that's really great in DaVinci Resolve is the stabilization. The stabilization. The stabili stabilization. <laughs> stabilization feature, especially if you're working with Blackmagic cameras enabling this new gyro stabilization. Now, I'm not techy enough to explain what the gyro stabilization is, but I know that it's limited to the use of Blackmagic cameras and it's really good. However, the normal stabilization in DaVinci Resolve is really good as well. Compared to the warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro, my experience with the stabilization in DaVinci Resolve has been both faster and better looking. And on the opposite side of Introducing opposite when you don't have time to say opposite side. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh my god. On the opposite side of stabilization, I often find myself wanting to add camera shake to my animations or tripod shots or yeah, it's just a good way to add life to any kind of footage. And I didn't really have a good solution for that in Premiere Pro or After Effects. In Premiere Pro I used this user-made keyframe preset that was working well most of the time, but it had very limited control and it just wasn't yeah, it was, a, it was a cheap fix, to be honest. But DaVinci Resolve has a built-in effect called Camera Shake, where you can do a lot of tweaking to get the desired result. Another thing that I experienced when I started editing was so when I pressed delete, this happened, which is the smart delete function, which is really convenient most of the times, but you kind of have to be aware what you're doing because basically smart delete pushes everything to the right of the clip you're removing to the left. So if you have a lot of layers and stuff that can get really messy, just make sure that nothing that you don't want to bring with comes with. There's also the normal delete, which is backspace. So yeah, that can be really useful, but also really scary. <laughs> Next up we have Fusion, which is DaVinci's version of After Effects, but rather than using two separate softwares, it's already integrated with the timeline of Resolve, creating a seamless interaction between your editing timeline and your VFX composition. The Fusion tab can be used for graphics, compositing, and visual effects. Now, I didn't really use Fusion much for my first project, but I'm really looking forward to getting to know it more in the future. I won't go into depth right now. It is a node-based layout, which can be really scary, but I'll get into that in a Second. Next, we have the color tab. And when I opened the color tab for the first time, I was terrified. There's so much controls everywhere and I just didn't know where to start. I know that the node tree can seem really terrifying for someone who hasn't used nodes before and is used to the layer view. Think of it like this. Your Premiere Pro layer timeline is basically a vertical stack of layers while node editing is a horizontal start to finish kind of workflow. If you feel intimidated by this different environment, imagine nodes being just like your layer 
layers but rotated 90 degrees. Hello, it's Kevin from the future here to quickly show you how to import and create a quick color grading setup with your LUTs. To import your LUTs, you head down to the project settings. Then we want to go into the color management tab. Down here we have open LUT folder, which is going to open this folder here. And simply what we want to do is we want to drag our LUTs into this folder. Once we've done that, we head back into DaVinci Resolve. We press update lists and then save. Now that we have that, we can go up here into the LUTs tab and we should be able to find our LUTs. Yeah, there it is. And then to create a super simple color grading setup, I'm gonna rename the base node here to corrector. And that's gonna be where we make our adjustments before the LUT. And then we simply add another corrector node. We put that there. We name it LUT. And then what we want to do to apply one of our LUTs to it, we simply drag it on like that. And then something that you might want to do is lower the intensity of your LUT. To do this, you head down into the key tab here and then simply change the key output gain of your LUT. And as you can see, it lowers the intensity of our LUT. And then we're going to use this corrector node here to make simple adjustments before the LUT. For example, adding some brightness here with the curves. And then of course, you might want to go more in depth into color grading, but this setup should definitely get you started. Our next tab is Fairlight. As someone who's got experience in music production, I loved how Fairlight looks like a doll. Doll. <laughs> a doll. <da>, dove. <laughs> I don't know. A digital audio workstation. Just like Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, you name it. Now, if this feels terrifying at first, you can still do all your audio work in the edit tab to begin with. It's just nice to take it to the next level. And I think Fairlight so far has been great. One thing that I wanted to do when I worked on the audio for my first project was I wanted to create an audio bus. And what an audio bus is, is basically letting the audio from your audio tracks pass through another track before they pass into the final output basically. This is perfect for when you want to apply one and the same reverb to multiple of your audio tracks. So what you want to do to create an audio bus is you go up to Fairlight here and then you head into bus format. Here you have your final output so we'll name that master and then what we want to do is we want to add a bus. We got our bus 2 let's just name that reverb. And then you can decide if you want it to be mono or stereo. We're gonna make it stereo and we're gonna add it a nice color of lime. There we go. Once we have that, it's gonna be hidden out here in the mixer. That's our bus number two, our reverb. All right, so the problem you're gonna run into here is that you have your bus and your main track is sending the audio to the bus, but the bus in turn is not sending the audio to the master output. So to fix this, we wanna go to Fairlight bus assign and then we select the bus that we want to send to which is master out this is kind of it doesn't really make sense to me either but this is how you do it so under buses here you select b1 master out that's the track we want to send the audio to and then under available tracks we select reverb so now we can see b10 there that's what we need so now what we can see here in the mixer is we got our bus track here and under bus outputs it's now sending to master so there we go that's something i needed to learn and now you know it too and last but not least we got the deliver tab if you're a premiere pro user you're probably not unfamiliar with the media encoder yeah the deliver tab is basically a media encoder but built right into the venture resolve isn't that just great i think it's great so yeah that's kind of the things that I experienced when I did my first video project and getting to know DaVinci Resolve. And if you want to learn more, there's so much resources out there on YouTube with tutorials and guides on how to get started in all these different tabs and also going in depth into the Fusion tab and the Color tab. Aside from that, Blackmagic themselves also have a free course on DaVinci Resolve that will actually make you a certified DaVinci Resolve editor. So yeah, I will link that below. I hope that this video can inspire you to finally make make that transition into DaVinci Resolve. There's so much resources and there's so many reasons to do it. So just do it already. But yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see what's coming next, make sure to subscribe. And yeah, take care and I'll see you. Okay, <laughs> bye.